Dear Anna Heights family, welcome to another online service. May we pray that the Lord will bless you and that uh, we trust that uh, you will have joy in these hard times. And we look forward this morning just to spend some time with worship and to listen to Pastor Darrell as well. Before we start singing, let's read the Word of God. Isaiah 41, 27 through 31 says, Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and His understanding no one can fathom. says He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. In verse 30 it says, even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. So our confidence is in the Lord. And that's why we love to sing the songs. And the Lord loves to hear our songs as well. So, uh, wherever you are right now, let's uh, enjoy this song. Let's sing it. It's the sound of the saints. If you want to uh, check it out so you can sing with us. Amen? Amen. Let's do it.
And as we uh, continue singing, I want you to meditate on these verses that uh, you can find in Lamentations 3, 22 to 24. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. Amen. Father, thank you so much for being with us, Lord. We love you. We praise you. And you are our strength, Lord. Amen.
take this time now to open your word and to study that you bless Pastor Darrell as he preaches. Lord, we thank you for this time you've given us this morning. We just know that you'll be here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Darrell. Thank you, Pastor JC and the praise team for leading us in music today. And before we look into the word of God, we're going to pray. But I want to remind you, if you want notes uh, to follow along with on today's message, uh, you can find them one of two ways. You can go to the church's website, and uh, click on the bulletin, uh, which you'll find a link to that on the uh, main web page, and you'll find them in their traditional place on the bulletin. Of course, you'll just be seeing it online. And then secondly, if you go to the video page, uh, under today's uh, message, there'll be a link to a PDF, and you can even print that off if you would like to and take uh, notes the uh, old-fashioned way. Before we begin today and look into the Word of God, uh, let's pray. Father, we just come to you thanking you for the day that you have given us. Uh, Father, it's, we are a week removed from Easter, and we know that Jesus is alive, never to die again. And Lord, in that victory, uh, followers of Christ, uh, we, we stand, and it is our hope. And I pray as we open up uh, your word and look in 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, that Lord, you will teach us what it means to be living stones, and uh, Lord, that we would follow you and serve you and uh, lead others to faith in you. And so God, thank you for teaching us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Nathan Sawaya stunned his co-workers and his bosses when he resigned at the age of 32 from his job as a lawyer in the city of New York. And the reason that he did that was to become a Lego professional. You heard it right, a Lego professional. And so ever since then, he's dedicated his life to uh, perfecting his art. And let me tell you, he has been uh, successful. His sculptures have shown on every continent in the world except for Antarctica. And I don't think they would appreciate his art anyway. And Nathan is known as a Lego master. Well, today, I want to talk about a master builder. And I'm not talking about a Lego master builder, but I'm talking about the ultimate master builder that we read about in 1 Peter chapter 2, and that is the Lord. So if you are there with me, I would like us to read 1 Peter chapter 2. And we're going to begin with verse 4 and read through verse 8. Now, we left off at verse 3, two weeks ago before Easter. So we're picking up where we left off. So let's go ahead and read this together. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. You know, I'd like to remind you as we are in 1 Peter uh, that the apostle is talking to a group of Christians that are going through hard times. Remember this series that we started a few weeks ago was Hope 
uh, for hardship. And so these Christians are going through difficult times. They are suffering just because they belong to Jesus. They are being persecuted for their faith. But we can apply the principles that we are learning here in 1 Peter to all types of hardship and suffering that we go through in life. So what Peter has done in the first chapter, he has started this letter with hope. And he gave them hope, not because of the circumstances that they were going through, but he gave them hope because of their salvation, what their salvation meant for them in this life and what their salvation meant for them in eternity. But then after he gave them this glimpse of hope, he started talking about their lives and holiness. And as we saw a couple of weeks ago, uh, there were many reasons the apostle told them that they were to live holy lives because one... God is holy, and God wants His children to reflect His attributes of holiness. And another reason, and and the reason that we see at work today in this passage, is that the Lord wanted His children to be holy because they lived in a world of people that did not know Him. And these people that did not know the Lord, that didn't have Christ in their life, If God's people lived holy lives, it opened up an avenue for witness to tell the lost world about the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. So remember that as we uh, dive right in. So we read this passage, uh, these, these few verses together, and... Did you notice all the metaphors? We talked about uh, a stone, a living stone, a cornerstone, uh, a, a stumbling stone, uh, little living stones, and, and, and priests, and all these metaphors and mixed metaphors. And it, it's kind of confusing, but they all go together as we understand uh, the work of Jesus Christ and even his work in our lives. So the first thing that we are going to talk about today is Jesus the living stone. You know, Peter was not the first one to compare the Lord to a stone. As a matter of fact, we're going to see this imagery in the Old Testament. We, we find three Old Testament quotations in these verses that we read today, and they all have to do with the Lord being a stone. Uh, but did you notice what kind of stone it starts out with? It says, as we come to him, the living stone. So, so Jesus is a living stone. What exactly is a living stone? Well, we know what a living stone is. We are a week removed from Easter. And Easter is all about the victory of Jesus Christ over sin and death through the resurrection. Jesus is alive forevermore, never to die again. He is the living stone. And that's exactly what Peter has in mind in this passage today. But Jesus as the living stone. You remember last week on Easter, we looked in Romans chapter 6 and 1 Thessalonians. And in Romans 6, uh, the Apostle Paul talked about the the, uh, union that we have with Christ. He talked about that when we come to Christ, our old self was nailed to the cross with Jesus. And if we have been united in a death like His, surely we will also be united in a life like His. So let me tell you, this living stone is also the giver of life. And this comes in full view in this passage today. So let's look at these Old Testament quotes about Jesus as the living stone. Uh, So the first one we see is it says the cornerstone, and it's Isaiah 28, 16. Listen to the passage. It says, For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. So here we find in the, in the book of Isaiah this prophecy that Jesus fulfills that, that says that he is a cornerstone chosen and precious, but this cornerstone is being laid in Zion. Zion is another word. It's a synonym for Jerusalem in the Scripture. So what is the 
the building that is holy, that, that, that God dwells in Jerusalem in the Old Testament, was the temple itself. And so as we read this passage, uh, we have in view here uh, the temple that we have in Zion in Jerusalem. And uh, we also have Jesus as the new temple, uh, the spiritual temple, you could call it. So here he says that they have a cornerstone. Let's talk construction for a moment. So a cornerstone in ancient building. Uh, today, many times, a cornerstone is just a, a decorative or a figurative uh, feature in a building. But a cornerstone in ancient construction many times was the first stone that was laid. And that cornerstone was a way that everything else was built, plumbed, and aligned in the building. So I've got a couple tools with me today. Uh, the first I have is a level, right? And so if you know anything about construction, what a level does is you put it on whatever you're trying to level, and there's a bubble. And if the bubble is in the middle, then you're level. But you can also use it this way with the same concept, and we call that plumb. And so with a cornerstone in construction, this, this stone that was level and plumbed and square was used to align every other stone in the building. Now, my children asked me, Dad, why do they call it a square when it looks like a triangle? And that's a really good question. Let's just say we have a board for a moment, and it, it's this wide. I should be able to take this square and put it against the edge and draw a line, and then flip it to the other side of the board and draw a line, and continue all the way across the board, and I've drawn four lines, and if this is a true 90 degree angle, and I've lined it up properly, that should be a perfect square. And so the cornerstone in construction, in ancient construction, it was used to align, to plumb, to plan the alignment for the entire building. It was the most important stone in construction. And here it says in this passage that Jesus is the cornerstone. Wow. Uh, Jesus is the most important stone, living stone, in God's building that we're going to study about just in a little bit. So first we have the cornerstone. And then we have a second uh, Old Testament scripture. And listen what it says in Psalm 118.22. Here we find it quoted here in, in 1 Peter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Now, in most English translations, the word is, is repeated cornerstone. But in reality, it's a different word, different Greek word than was used in the previous verse. But it's a similar concept, so they translate it cornerstone, but literally it is the head of the corner. It's a compound word, and one word is head, and the other word is angle or corner. So this stone is the head of the corner, and that's not necessarily talking about height, but it's talking about first in line and priority, and so they put it as the cornerstone, the stone that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. You know, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is talking to the Jewish leaders that uh, have rejected him. And he quotes this very psalm, Psalm 118, 22, and he, he's talking about himself, that the stone that the builders rejected has become uh, the cornerstone. Let me tell you, it's talking about the value and the headship of Jesus Christ. Just like we say that Jesus is the head of the church, the body of Christ, that Jesus is exalted. See, he's the cornerstone in which everything else is established and aligned and is plumbed and the whole building is built. But Jesus also is the exalted head. 
I love Philippians chapter 2. And if you've heard me preach very many times, I may have mentioned Philippians chapter 2 in this beautiful hymn. And let me read, let me quote for you verses 9 through 11 in this second chapter of Philippians. Therefore God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on Him a name that is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let me tell you, because of the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus is the head of the corner. Jesus, the living stone, He's the cornerstone. He's the head of the corner. But also notice in this passage, this third Old Testament quote is that Jesus is the stumbling stone. And we find that in Isaiah 8, uh, 14. And notice what it says. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to to do. Wow. So we've all stumbled over things in our way. Uh, I'm kind of extra clumsy. I can stumble over carpet. But you can picture this, a, a, a stone, a rock that's in the path in front of you, and you just don't quite lift your foot high enough, and you stumble, and you fall. That's the picture that we have here, is that Jesus is the stumbling stone. You know, we talked about these religious leaders that rejected Jesus. And as we look at this passage, it, it, it tells us that they stumble because they rejected or they did not obey the Word of God. You see, the Bible, the Old Testament Scriptures prophesied about Jesus. But these religious leaders that lived at the time of Jesus had their mind made up. They had rejected Jesus because He did not fit the concept of Messiah that they had painted in their mind. And so Jesus became a stumbling stone to them. They rejected Him because they did not obey the Word of God. You know, a lot of people stumble over Jesus still today, don't they? Uh, people have their own concept of God or, or me and God have this agreement. Let me tell you, there is no other agreement with God except for His Son, Jesus Christ. You must accept Him. You must obey the Word. And when you come to Christ on His terms is when Jesus is not the stumbling stone, uh, but He is the stone that gives you life. Not too many weeks ago, uh, the family and I were hiking, and it was a new hiking trail for us. And it was one of these bluff trails in southern Illinois that we love so much. And as we walked along the bottom of these bluffs, uh, here was the picture that came in view. All of a sudden, we approached these giant stones that were in uh, the, the middle of the path. And you could look up and you could see that once they had been attached at the top of the bluff, but at some ancient earthquake or some cataclysmic event, maybe it was Noah's flood, that they had become attached, detached from the top of the bluff and they had fallen and they had embedded into the ground. What a sight that must have been. But you know, these same stones that are on the ground we're, we're making beautiful artwork and, and passageways for us to walk through as we enjoyed that trail. So let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus is the living stone. He is the cornerstone. He is the head of the corner. And He is the stumbling stone. The same stone that gives life can also bring destruction for those who do not obey the Word of God. That's a sober warning that we are given today. Let me tell you, the, the call of God is to believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. And for every soul that rejects Jesus Christ, they are disobeying the Word of God and the call of God. So believe in Christ today. Accept Him as your Lord and your Savior. 
Well, the second thing that we see today is, is not just the living stone Jesus, but he also talks about other stones. So Jesus is the chosen stone, he said, who is precious. He was rejected by men who stumbled over him, but he was precious and chosen by God. So what about these other stones? Let's read about them. And these are God's people, and we find them in the following verse. It says, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Hmm. So God's people are living stone. Jesus is the living stone. And as we come to him, it says, we are living stones. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the source of life. He has defeated sin. He has defeated death. He has defeated hell. And there is no spiritual life except in Him. And this is the sad fact. In our natural condition, we have no spiritual life. I'm reminded years ago, I was at home, and we lived at a house at that point out in the country, and I got a phone call, and it was kind of late at night. And it was a bunch of teenagers, and they said, we, we need you to call a friend of ours. We've been talking and texting with him on the phone, and he's talking about shooting himself tonight, committing suicide. Well, I didn't know the young man, so I said, sure, give me his number. So I reached out to him, and, and finally he returned my call, and, and we talked for a long time. And he told me of his, his sad family life and his desperation and everything else that had gone on. And you know, it wasn't too uh, much longer. This yes young man, he gave up the idea of suicide and he came to faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave him life. I'm reminded of a man that was probably in his mid to, 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 to late 20s that had been coming to the church that I had pastored and he began uh, to date a young woman that was a member of our church. Uh, he had come from a broken marriage already once at his young of age, and he had a son from that. But the only bright spots in his life were this little boy of his and, and this new girl that he was dating. And she began to bring him to church, and it, it was one of these missionary dating things that I'm not necessarily a big fan of. But she began to bring him to church, and uh, he heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't hear eloquent preaching or anything like that. He just heard the truth. And it reminded him of words they had heard so many times before as a younger man. And the more he came, the more convinced he became that he had no spiritual life and that he was condemned, separated from God. I remember one Sunday morning, he came walking down that aisle, just a big mountain of a man sobbing and weeping and crying because he wanted Christ to give him life and to forgive him of our sins. Listen, as we come to the living stone, we become living stones. Isn't that incredible? We have life because of the life-giving force of Jesus Christ in His crucifixion and resurrection and the forgiveness and salvation that we can have through Him. But notice that we are being built to serve. So we become living stones as, as we come to Him. As Peter would say in the third verse, we have tasted that the Lord is good, right? But look at the rest of the Scripture. It says, You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. So here we have this temple in Jerusalem, right? And we have the, the foundation stone that has been set, this cornerstone. And we know spiritually that cornerstone is Jesus. 
And then every other stone in the building finds its place in relation to the cornerstone that has been laid. And folks, that's the exact picture that we have. When that temple was built, Solomon's temple, that grand temple, the scripture said that there was not a sound of a hammer and a chisel heard in all of Jerusalem. Do you know why? Because not only did they, they cut, quarry the stone outside of Jerusalem, but they also cut and carved each stone to its dimension before it ever got to the building site. So when the stones arrived, they just put them together according to the master plan that was already designed. That's exactly what Jesus Christ has done for us. He is the living stone. And He has built us and He is building us. He is putting us in His spiritual house, the spiritual temple. We are the living temple of God. Now let me stop just for a moment. Because, you know, in the United States of America, we uh, are a nation of, of very independent people. We, we like to think uh, that, that it's just me and God, that, you know, I'm, I'm a cowboy, I'm a lone ranger. As we look in the Scripture, uh, we do not find our faith a, a, a solitary faith. Here, we have this great picture that we are being built into a spiritual house and you're a stone and I'm a living stone and, and we are together building God's temple. If you're trying to live this life of faith alone, folks, I'm telling you, you're in for hardship. It will be a disaster. God designed you to be with His people so that you can have encouragement, you can have fellowship. And, and, and I know there's some of you saying, but you don't know how the church has hurt me. You know what? You may be exactly right. There may be people in that building, in that local church that have hurt you. But there's also many more people that love Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength that will be there for you. Listen, we are to forgive and we are to move on and we are to serve with godly people surrounded by them. So stop being solitary. Stop being by yourself and, and, and thinking that you can live a victorious Christian life by yourself because it will not happen. You belong to a spiritual house that Jesus is building. Not only is he building a spiritual house, but it also he says that he is building a holy priesthood. Now, here we have all these mixing of metaphors, don't we? We have a living stone. We have a cornerstone. We have a, a head of the cornerstone. We have a stumbling stone. And now we have little living stones and, and priests. And the living stones, the little living stones and the priest are the same people. That's, that's Christ's followers. So how can we be the temple and the priests that serve the temple at the same time? Because it's not physical. It's talking about a spiritual priesthood, that we are a spiritual house. And so Christ is making us a, a priesthood, it says. And our job, Christ is making us holy priests. But our job is to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So, so what are these spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ? Well, you know what? It's not just one thing. It could be anything that you do for the glory of Jesus Christ. Any good thing that's for the glory of of Jesus Christ. So it could be a good deed done for a neighbor next door if you do it in the name of Jesus. It could be giving your tithe to your local church if you do it in the name of Jesus. It could be singing to the Lord with all of your heart if you do it in the name of Jesus. Do you see that line of thought? And those are the spiritual sacrifices that we make as we serve the Lord. I'm reminded what the Apostle Paul says uh, in, in Romans chapter 12, that, um, that these things are our spiritual 
act of service. And so we serve the Lord when we do these good and godly things. But notice what the scripture also says. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So here we have this group of people that have not obeyed the word of God. And and Jesus has become a stumbling stone for them because they have not believed and have not lived out the word of God. They've rejected Christ. But for us who believe, there is no shame. So other places in the scripture, this is what the word of God says. Uh, Those in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Isn't that great? Uh, Our sins are forgiven. They are separated from us as far as the east is from the west. That we have been made white as snow. So here we have this wonderful promise that as God's people, there is no shame for His children. In opposition to those who have rejected Christ. And the last thing today is this, is that we are honored by God. So this is what it says here in the text. So honor, so the honor is for you who believe. Well, you know what? I, I enjoy being honored sometimes, don't you? But the honor is not because something that I have done. Uh, it's, it's because what Christ has done for me. I have believed, and because I have believed in Jesus Christ, the Lord is going to honor me. There will be a day at the end of my life when I will stand before the Lord, and He is my good and righteous judge, and He will look at me, and He will say, Come, enter into the joy of your Master. We will rule and reign with Him, with Christ. And God honors us. Well, as we come to a close today, I'm not much with Legos these days. I know a lot of kids and a lot of young men are. But I do take pride in, 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 my, in my building. You know, I can look back over the years and at, at my years as a carpenter and the things that I've built. I've put room additions on houses. I've, uh, I'm currently building a, a, a garage uh, at one point years ago, uh, my family was growing so quickly, I, I cut the roof off of the second story of the little farmhouse we lived in. I, I jacked it up about 20 inches in the air, the roof, and I restudded the whole thing, and so we had a full second story. And so I, I look back, and, and I take pride in those things. But let me tell you, I am not a master builder. But Christ is the master builder. And the thing that he has to offer is eternal life. And it will never be taken away. Jesus is the living stone. And if you want to have life that lasts forever, come to the living stone. And he will honor you. You will not be put to shame. And he will build you for service in His temple as a holy priest. So Christian, I want to invite you in these hard times that we live in today to come to Christ and remember your foundation and do not let the things around you sway you, but live your life for Him. Remember, You are His priest. You are His house. You are offering spiritual sacrifices to Him. It is your life. It is your worship. And so live for Him today. And then I want to talk to you that are stumbling right now over Jesus. And you know who you are. Maybe there's a a point in your life where you even confessed Christ, but now you look back on that as foolishness. Let me tell you what. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father 
but through Christ. Will you be persuaded not by my words today, but by the word of God to place your faith in Jesus and believe in his name. And if you do, just like these men I talked about earlier, you can have spiritual life as well. Well, as we come to a close today, I want to pray with you. And after we pray, uh, Pastor JC and our worship team are going to lead us in a closing song of May the Words of My Mouth. And so let's pray. And I want to invite you. Maybe you need to confess the Lord Jesus Christ with the words of your mouth from your heart today. Lord, we come to you right now thanking you for this day. And I thank you for your word. And as it teaches us about uh, this holy life as living stones. Uh, Father, man, we have been elevated today by your word in Jesus Christ. We are part of the temple that God is building and Jesus is the cornerstone. We are part of the spiritual house. And Lord, not only that, but we are priests in the house. And so I pray that my brothers and sisters in Christ would serve Him and serve Him fully. And I pray for the one right now that their soul is burdened because they have rejected Christ. Lord, I pray that You would work on them mightily today, that You would draw them to Jesus. And Lord, their life would be changed. They would be converted. And they will see absolutely that Christ is their only hope. Father, give them the words in their mouth to say. Let them confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, family. I will see you next time. Thank you, Pastor Darrell. And the call to us is to give our lives to the Lord and do what He pleases. So let's sing this song. May the words of my mouth.
family let's be faithful this week to the great commission of the Lord we have not said in a long time so how about if we say it one more time and this is Matthew 28 18 to 20 and it says then Jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God bless you and have a great week.